What's up guys, this is Nick from stridewise.com and today I'm reviewing what I think are actually the most Japanese of my Japanese jeans, Samurai. Founded in 1997 by Toru Nogami, Samurai Jeans actually launched a fair amount of time after the Japanese denim scene kind of debuted in the 1970s. But while that's when the whole thing kind of started, it really exploded in popularity in the 1990s. And after spending a bit of time making a lot of jeans that were inspired by vintage Levi's cuts, Samurai Jeans really exploded in popularity itself and became one of the best known names in Japanese denim. Now, unlike many denim companies that are based in Okayama, Samurai is based in Osaka, which is actually just a three hour drive away, so I guess it's not that big a difference. But Osaka is home to what many denim heads call the Osaka Five, the really big time, much older denim companies that are really revered and are real institutions in the world of Japanese denim. Those would be Full Count, Denim, Avisu, Studio Datazan, and Warehouse & Co. Out of those five, I only own Studio Datazan, so I guess I need to get my together. But with Samurai Jeans, when the brand first started, they were known for only making like batches of like 100 to 200 jeans at a time, really small batch stuff. And that is a habit they have maintained over the years. And they're always doing like special editions or like one-offs. A lot of the jeans they only make like for one batch and they never make them again, which makes them very hard to review as a reviewer because you know, most of the jeans like they're just not on the market for all that long. Nonetheless, with that in mind, what I've got for you here is S211XX jeans, relaxed tapered jeans, which are actually only available as an export model. They made these jeans with the intention of them really appealing to the American market and they are only really found, at least online, at Blue and Green, which is a store in Soho here in New York, which is where I bought these guys. About 50 wears a go. I've worn these jeans about 50 times. Let's take a close look at the denim. An interesting thing about Samurai is that I think they're the only company that's ever made jeans with Japanese cotton. Like they actually grew their own cotton because they wanted 100% made in Japan jeans. I don't own those jeans though because those jeans cost thousands and thousands of dollars. These jeans here are 16 ounces and they're just made with quote, a mix of cotton. Um, 16 ounces is what most people would consider mid-weight denim. Most Levi's are between 10 and 13 ounces for reference. And uh, while the jeans are made in Osaka, Japan, the denim, I believe, is made in Okayama. So yeah, I don't know where the cotton comes from. And that's in part because the cotton industry in Japan is sometimes separate from the denim makers. And the denim makers, like Samurai, just ask the cotton folks for a certain kind of denim, like rough, neppy, and so on. A lot of this information comes directly from the founder via japanalog.com, which is an excellent, excellent website run by my buddy Dave Stewart, who lives in Japan and speaks Japanese, and he runs around interviewing all the bosses of these denim companies. Uh, he reached out to Samurai uh, to get some answers for me. The best he could get is that these are a mix of cotton. <laughs> in one of these interviews, the, uh, the founder, Nagami, Nagami's son, says he's pretty sure he was the first guy to make jeans heavier than Levi's. He said that, quote, you have to understand that at the time, even the threads needed to make this kind of denim didn't exist. And the weight is what originally set them apart. And what they do with these jeans in particular is they use a special weave of six indigo warp threads and five ecru weft yarns. Ecru is like a beige type color that will come through as the warp threads fade over time. And you can see it coming through a little bit in uh, some of these areas of the jeans and in some of these close-ups that you're looking at now. So the six by five pattern, that creates a slightly uneven fabric, which helps them to fade a little faster. And it's true that these jeans have faded relatively quickly, relatively speaking, like uh, again, I've worn them about 50 times, already getting decent amount of electric blue fading around the crotch here, check out the back, definitely along the butt here, along these back belt loops, all along where the, where the belt would be if I had ever worn a belt with these, which I haven't. Uh, fading nice and fast, so that's like something that a lot of people are gonna be happy with with these jeans. Now it's emphasized as well that this is made with what they call a high twisted yarn. That's emphasized because that's a bit more of a stiff fabric, stiffer fabric gets more contrast fading. So that combined with the beige weft and that six by five thing uh, gets what the company calls a more vintage look when fading. So of course people want to know about the potential fades with these jeans. So as I've mentioned, I've had about 50 wears. I haven't washed them yet, even though you are getting some nice fading here. And also like you can see, if you look really closely, uh, some vertical fading, like there's like some bright blue lines going vertically down. That's like, it's a more of a vertical fade with these jeans. They're getting nice and faded around the crotch as well. That's where it has faded the most dramatically. Definitely take a look around here. 
uh, right there, yeah, around the crotch, kind of weird to look at, but there it is. This is where it's getting a really quite light blue, quite electric blue around here. So as for older fades, uh, this is the same pair of jeans that I've seen online. I'm not saying all Samurai uses precisely the same denim, but the ones I'm showing you now are fades from other pairs of 16 ounce jeans from Samurai. This is a pair uh, from Ferdinand Andrew. It's two years old, three washes over those two years. And this is the same pair, two washes later. So maybe you can look forward to fades like that. Maybe, I don't know. Now those fades you just looked at might have given you some inspiration as to how often you want to wash or not wash your jeans. Uh, again, plenty of people out there wash them once a year, less than once a year sometimes. Personally, I just wash them when they start to smell. I'm a little bit guilty of wearing these particular jeans not too long after going to the gym. They smell a little bit, but a good way to get around that if you really wanna put off washing your jeans is turning them inside out and just hanging them up in a well-ventilated area and helping them get some air. That can help you to uh, put off the inevitability of having to wash your jeans whenever you want to do that. Some people also freeze them. Some people also just soak them as well as possibility. That's pretty close to washing them, but doesn't technically involve any soap, uh, which is very important to some folks. A couple things I want to emphasize. First of all, Samurai makes their own soy-based laundry like detergent powder. That's just for jeans, just for like Japanese jeans, uh, just the source of Japanese jeans that they make. Uh, you can probably also use it for any of your other Japanese jeans as well. Apparently it works really well. People absolutely adore it so uh, that's definitely worth thinking about if you're happy to pay the import fees and everything else to get this particular powder uh, over into your laundry uh, I also want to mention when you do wash them if you decide to put it in a washing machine which uh, you know is the easiest option of course turn them inside out and make absolutely certain that you don't have any other clothes in the washing machine because the indigo will bleed and then that will you know ruin all your other clothes and then the third thing is to make sure that you line dry them in the shade do not put them in a tumble dryer that's like a big big no-no with these sorts of jeans now I just talked your ear off about the denim itself, but what I really, really love about these jeans and what really elevates them to one of my favorite pairs of Japanese jeans is the ton of really subtle little details that the average person, of course, would not notice. But denim heads such as myself really, really appreciate. There's a lot of really, really intricate, interesting like symbolism and also lettering on these jeans that I really want to talk about. First up, let's start with like the basic stuff, the Selvage ID, right? It's right here. It is a glittery, shiny, uh, sort of a silvery pink color. It sparkles a bit in the sunlight. This is not like Momotaro jeans, which have like a lot of pink stitching. Like they've got stitching like running up the inside of the thigh and it's pink and you can see that from the outside. The only pink you're gonna see on these jeans is like when the Selvage ID is cuffed up like that. You can also see a little bit of it on the coin pocket as well. I really like it. Uh, this is technically called Silver Lame. And the fact that it is like glittery and shiny is meant to be evocative of like a shiny samurai sword coming to cut your head off. So I think that's a pretty cool part of these jeans. So let's start off on the iron buttons on the fly. On every one of these buttons, you've got a character at the very top. You've got the samurai jeans logo on the bottom. And then on either side of that, you've got two Japanese matsu trees, like Japanese pine trees. The character at the top here, it means samurai, uh, but in the Chinese alphabet. I mean, it's not a Chinese language character, it's a Japanese language, but it's in a different alphabet than the other letters on the buttons and the rivets and stuff on elsewhere in the jeans. There are some characters that both languages share. Uh, all Japanese kanji characters were originally from China, although many have been changed and simplified. That's kind of like another story. That's a long story. We don't need to get into that right now. But the, uh, the language uh, here on the iron buttons on the fly, uh, this is a different language than you're gonna find on the brass rivets over here in the pockets. You've got eight characters, they mean samurai jeans in Japanese. If you flip over to the other side on the inside of the jeans, you've got four characters and they mean samurai. Also, on the pockets here, while we're looking at the pockets, you got this really interesting stitching on the pockets themselves. It's really, really intricate. It's called jacquard stitching. And all these characters all over the jeans. It's a little bit hard reading them. I sent pictures of them to uh, Japan Log Guy and also Samurai as jeans as well to get them to take a look at it. They were pretty sure the characters mean Samurai jeans. But it might also potentially be the same characters that are written or share some of the same characters that are written on the inside of the rivets on the back pockets. So on the back pockets, on the inside of the pants, resting in your butt cheeks, are the words Shogyo Mujo, which alludes to the Buddhist concept of impermanence, of uh, the transitive nature of all existence. I believe literally, it means all material things must pass away. So uh, it's really cool. I really, really like this aspect of the jeans. The fact that you're walking around with some Buddhist philosophy inscribed on the rivets on your butt, uh, I think it's great. So you got rivets all over the place, all saying slightly different things. You've also got the jacquard stitching as well, which say different things on them as well. Then you've got, of course, the leather patch on the back of the jeans, 
which has the big the big character here. That is the uh, that samurai word of the Chinese alphabet. You've also got samurai genuine genes written on here in English. And there's also some characters at the bottom right here, which mean for foreign use only, which is uh, cementing the fact that these are export genes. Like these are genes you can only find in the US. They are made for the US market. Now keen fans of the Samurai brand will probably feel sorry for me because I don't have this sort of classic waist patch that the brand is really well known for. That is a waist patch that depicts a very famous sword fight that took place in 1619 between two Samurai warriors called Sasaki Kajiro and Miyamoto Musashi. It's a fight that I actually spent a ton of time looking up and researching after I found out about it. I think Musashi cheated. No one can tell me otherwise. I encourage you to look it up and make up your own mind. Interestingly enough though, uh, one of the reasons I think that this brand is called Samurai is that the old timey Samurai warriors used to actually have an indigo cloth underneath their armor because natural indigo is actually antibacterial to a certain extent. So it might help you to have like some natural indigo underneath your armor to help you sort of treat and avoid infection from all the wounds you have sustained in battle. That said, once again, this is synthetic indigo, so it's not you know technically in line with that whole history. But nonetheless, it's a pretty cool aspect of history. The fact that like indigo dyed denim e cloth is actually tied into the samurai legend. So I just want to quickly mention the fit and sizing with these jeans. This is always kind of like the dumbest section on these videos because I always wear relaxed tapered jeans because I have like pretty thick thighs and a very high rise. I got a very tall butt crack. So all of my jeans basically fit that, uh, that I get relaxed tapered with a high rise. That's what this particular S211XX model is. What I do want to highlight just a couple things. Uh, the first is that this is closer to uh, my true size than a lot of my Japanese jeans. So like what I mean by that is in the United States and pretty much everywhere else almost, uh, clothes are actually vanity sized, right? So what I mean by that is that all of my clothes have a 32 inch waist, but if I actually get a tape measure and measure it around my waist, I'm actually more like 34 inches and you're probably gonna have a very rude shock yourself. If you actually get a tape measure and measure it out, you're gonna find out that you're actually thicker than you thought you were. It's very sad when you first find that out. Uh, so all my pants are 32, in actuality I'm like a 34 and these samurai jeans here are a 33. So I would encourage you to get like one inch uh, below your true size, one inch above your uh, vanity size. Uh, so that's, that's my advice there. The second thing I wanted to mention, the jeans haven't stretched out all that much. Normally when I've worn jeans for more or less two months straight, I'm considering wearing a belt with them. That hasn't happened here. I really do like the fit of these jeans like a lot. I really, really like it. Uh, but I would say the waist has only stretched maybe an inch, maybe even a little bit less. So in my experience anyway, uh, with this particular 16 ounce denim and Samurai is well known for that 16 ounce denim, uh, it's stretched, but not to an insane degree. So keep that in mind. As far as the price goes, these jeans cost me $305. That's what they cost uh, at Blue and Green's website and also in the store where I got them myself. The only other place I've seen these uh, for sale online is at corelection.com, C-O-R-L-E-C-T-I-O-N.com. That's actually an Australian based company. If you buy there, you're gonna have to pay like, you know, the shipping fee and import fees and everything else. Uh, they sell them for about 260, 270 bucks. Uh, it's probably gonna wind up being over 300 bucks by the time you get them to your door anyway. So. Uh, Jeans, Japanese jeans are sort of like boots in that if they cost under 300 bucks, I'm pretty happy. If they're between 300 and 350 bucks, I'm like, I'm okay with it. And then if it's over 350 bucks, it had better be something very, very special. Uh, Samurai, they're right in that 300 to $350 range. So it's not cheap, but not crazy expensive for Japanese jeans. But yeah, they are, they are over 300 bucks. They exceed that threshold. So, uh, Keep that in mind, yeah, they're not cheaper, but they're not stupid expensive for Japanese jeans. Then again, they're made with synthetic indigo, so you know, I wouldn't expect them to be that much more expensive. All right, so why should you consider getting a pair of samurai jeans? Uh, the denim is a really nice sort of like compromise between the really, really slubby neppy stuff that like some people really like in the world of Japanese denim. I'm thinking of course about like Pure Blue Japan, or maybe Studio Datazan, those extra hairy neppy slubby denims. Uh, that's not this, uh, but it is nonetheless uh, more irregular and more furry than the really clean denim that you're gonna get from like Ironheart or by some like American brands like Brave Star for instance. It's a nice like in the middle sort of denim that's gonna please a lot of people in that regard. Uh, but while the denim I really like and also another big pro is that you're gonna get some nice high contrast fades like the ones I mentioned earlier because of the particular 
warp and weft weave in the particular way they dye it and everything else. Uh, so the denim, I think, is like, a, again, a nice compromise between like slubby and not too slubby. I like the high contrast fades. What I really, really like though, and what I really go crazy about with these is all the extra details here, like all the different, uh, like the Japanese language stitched onto the inside of the pockets. It's really cool, and none of my jeans so far have had such intricate details like that, this jacquard stitching here of Japanese characters. You've got the Japanese characters here, you've got the different Japanese characters on the button that we in Samurai, you've got the Samurai jeans on these uh, rivets by the pockets on the inside, they say something else. On the butt, you've got the Buddhist concept of impermanence, all material things must pass away. I, I love it. I love it. There's like just like so many intricate, really interesting details here. And also the salvage ID, the fact that it's pink and the fact that it's sparkly. Uh, it's kind of hilarious in some respects. But also that the sparkliness is meant to like evoke a samurai sword. There's like just like a lot of really interesting uh, symbolism and allusions to history going on throughout this pair of jeans. So like these jeans are more of like a walking metaphor than uh, any other pair of Japanese jeans that I own. So I, I really like that. And like when I wear them, it really just kind of feels like I'm wearing something that's uh, more than a pair of jeans, more so than my other Japanese denim. The main potential downsides with these jeans, uh, most of them, some people might consider pros, some might consider them cons. It's all a very individual thing. Uh, but the fact that this is not very, very slubby, very nappy, very irregular, very hairy. Uh, for some people, that's like what they want from Japanese jeans, and this might not reach the threshold of weird that they might be expecting from their, uh, their old world Japanese jeans. Like, mm, fair enough, if that's your thing. Uh, on a similar note, the glittery silver lame on the Selvage ID, I have seen some people on Reddit's raw denim thread, subreddit, I should say, uh, I've heard them say that they think it's a bit gaudy, like they don't like that sparkly pink on their jeans. Mm, fair enough, if that's your thing, that's fair enough. Uh, also, the other thing is that these are, I mean, they're over $300. So again, that's, that's middle of the road pricing. All I'm gonna say about that is that it's not a great bargain. I'm not gonna call them expensive, but they're not unusually uh, cheap for Japanese jeans. Finally, they are made with 100% cotton stitching, which is cool, a lot of people are gonna like that. Um, but there are a lot of jeans out there that are made with like a bunch of different types of threads. Uh, they'll have some polyester threads as well for like extra heavy duty sort of uh, construction and to make sure they'll be, to really minimize like the chance of loose threads. And on these jeans, it's 100% cotton stitching and uh, I've already seen, uh, we got some loose threads here. Uh, I've got some here around the belt loop on the inside of the jeans uh, as well. It's starting to get like a little bit loose. Uh, yeah, so the, the stitching is not as robust as some of my other jeans. That's something you might wanna keep in mind as well. All right, those are my thoughts on samurai jeans. Well, my pair of samurai jeans anyway. Yours might be a little bit different, but nonetheless, these are the most Japanese jeans that I own. Obviously, you can't quantify Japanese-ness and just sort of messing around there, but nonetheless, I do absolutely adore these jeans. I love the glittery pink salvage ID, and what I really, really like about it is that every time I sit down, I've got Japanese characters pressing into my butt that exist to tell me that me and all my loved ones will one day die and rot in the ground. If you want a pair of jeans reminding you of your impending death and the impermanent nature of all things, I highly encourage you to get a pair of slightly Buddhist samurai jeans. <laughs> that was a weird way to end it, was that weird? <laughs> All right, those are my thoughts on Samurai Jeans. There's a full written review in the description below with lots of pictures you can check out. And make sure you subscribe as well because I've got a whole lot more denim reviews and boot reviews coming up.